Is it? Welcome everybody. I uh, call this meeting for June the sixth. Sorry, June the twenty first, two thousand and twenty two. Today is National Indigenous Peoples Day, a day for all Canadians to recognize the unique heritage, diverse cultures, and outstanding contributions of First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We acknowledge that we are on First Nation land, Turtle Island, inhabited by First Nations from time immemorial. For thousands of years, First Nations people, the Anishinaabe, Cree, Dakota, OJ Cree nations, walked and lived on this land and knew it to be the center of their lives and spirituality. We acknowledge this land became the homeland of the Métis people. We also acknowledge that we are now bound together by Treaty 4. <clears throat> Result of the agenda for June 21st, 2022, regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Councilor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Result of the minutes of the June 7th, 2022, regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Deputy Mayor Antoni, seconded by Councilor Bobbick. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Four receptions of delegations and hearings. 4.1, we have a delegation from the Swan River Community Center. We have with us tonight Jerry Dominato, Gary Slack, and Bernice Carton. Yes, I don't forget. Welcome and uh, we will give you the chance to uh, speak before council. Who's going to speak first? Uh, well, thank you for uh, hearing from us. Uh, I guess you've, I'm assuming you've all read this request. Um, we're coming into a couple of really tough years for the community center. Uh, COVID, well, canceled two seasons, of course, which actually wasn't that bad. There was a lot of relief money out there but what it did now is this last season it prevented a number of curlers from curling and uh, the men's league in fact went from 18 teams to eight the ladies league <coughs> lost four or five teams i guess the seniors didn't do too badly but they lost a number of curlers as well because they chose not to get vaccinated and they couldn't curl uh, so as a result of that, we are coming into a very difficult financial season. And I guess one aspect of trying to save some money was the tax bill that we, we, are incur, we incur every year. Um, hydro is our major expense, um, and we really can't do anything about that. We've already switched to LED lighting and all that. It's just we get $6,000 hydro bills in the throughout the winter, running the plant and warming the, that big building. Um, so I guess one thing that we thought we might get some relief from is the taxes that we pay. And that's basically what prompted this letter and this meeting. Okay. Any questions to Mr. Slack? Go ahead. Personally, thank you. You guys did a wonderful job, obviously. What the council can do, I guess, will depend on the group. Do you have any idea why you're losing so many people? And is there reason to be optimistic? Because I suspect you all are. And we're coming back in the next round. Well, curling is, is being hit hard, as a lot of other sports are. I mean, uh, you know, volunteerism is, is also in decline. But because those people couldn't curl, I do have a lot of concern that they won't come back uh, to it. It'll, whatever, they sit on the couch instead in January and they don't come out. But we do want to go ahead with this season and we need some relief to try and build those numbers back up to at least to some sort of a sustainable level. Because at the rate we are now, it's not sustainable. And we'll be handing you guys the keys, basically. Yeah. Do you have any plans on how to build those numbers back up? Well, we're just hoping for a rebound initially, like those 
people that didn't curl because of the COVID regulations, we hope they come back to start with. And we're trying, it got off to a bumpy start because of COVID again, some, a new league on Friday to try and get newcomers and uh, new curlers involved. And so we're hoping that that will go better this year without the interruption. Uh, that's the start of it anyway. We also, I guess, want to try and utilize it a little more in the off season, I think. It's another thing that we'll be looking at throughout the summer months. Uh, I mean, the upstairs part of it can certainly be used for wedding receptions or whatever, and I think we need to examine that a bit more because it sits empty too much. Great idea. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Councillor Moran. Um, <clears throat> looking through the uh, financial set you said, which is appreciated, uh, I see you look under your taxes and uh, insurance line. Uh, your tax or part of your insurance is that through the town, through us, or is it you go through a private agency? Through Cook to Cook. Through Cook to Cook. Yeah, it's just that that's the way that the <coughs> accountant puts it in the books. Okay, so so you go through an independent uh, yeah. uh, agency. Um, so for the question maybe would the administration be able to see if that can't be added to ours and see what kind of difference in right, costing yeah. that would be. Um, Do you have the entire operation, like the building and contents? Yeah, like all yeah. the what they have insured and put it through um, our major one and then see if there'd be any savings that way. I like for it. What does it cost you now for insurance? It's between taxes and yeah, Insurance is eighteen thousand. The financial last. Okay, well, we'll we'll definitely look into that that part of it. Mm -hmm. you know, um, <coughs> anybody else? Yeah. Because I'll let I'll let each of them speak. So if there's any other questions for Mr. Slap. Uh, you are a nonprofit organization, right? Yes. So is there not a break? Yeah. Yeah. You, there is a. In your documents there, you'll have an item there from CFO Ganita. Jerry, did you have anything? Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, aside from, from the stuff that Gary was saying, and in the correspondence, uh, you will see where the membership has really stepped forward over the years to supply the dollars to the community center. And uh, how long can we go on doing this? I brought up the sample from, from uh, Nipua, which is similar size to us. They own the facility, the curling club. They don't pay their municipal tax. Flin Flon is going through a bit of a change right now, but they own the building. And uh, I'm not sure what they will be. They'll be paying a certain amount per per year, per, per member. And then I got a hold of Dauphin, and as you know, it's, it's a complex, and uh, <coughs> they, they uh, pay $35 per sheet per draw, whatever that be and they pay it on a monthly basis. So they don't have to worry about ice maker, they don't have to worry about anything. It's their building. They don't have a bar, the curling club doesn't. It belongs to the facility, the town. Um, cafeteria is the same. The curling club doesn't have any of that. So that's, you know, I just tried to, I could have gone to more communities and, and asked them what it is because, you know, I mean, it looks good on paper sometimes, but it's really not. Because I pointed out the one there within the last couple of years, we raised between sixty-five and seventy thousand to do some of the renovations in that, and uh, it was the it was the membership that came through, like big time, of that sixty-five seventy thousand dollars. A majority of that was membership donations being charitable, and they get a charitable receipt. Uh, when we lost bingo or we gave it up because we weren't making any money, we went back to the members and said, you know, we need to have something to replace bingo, so each member pays $60 a year above and beyond their thing, and they get a charitable donation. Um, two years ago when we couldn't curl, we curled for three, two or three draws, yeah. and we had to shut it down, and we kept it open until October. The memberships that were paid, the members gave it up, and we gave them a charitable donation, so, you know, how long can we go like this? And, and I guess we're just looking for somewhere where we can 
keep our hands on it without going to the membership too much and uh, maybe it will help. You know, nobody's saying we're going to turn the curling rink over to the town because we are the, the, uh, the board or there's more of us. You know, this has never gone to the membership per se to say, you know, we should give up this curling rink because I don't think anybody wants to do that. But anyway, that's in a nutshell pretty well covers some of the things that were quoted in the uh, thing. Okay, um, Councilor White. Well, I'm in favor of everything you do, and, and hopefully we can help, but that'll be up to us as a team to decide. Have you approached the foundation, the community foundation? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have, we've had different grants. Yeah. Like in that, with that 65,000, yeah, we got something from there. We got grants from SCC. We got some from, I think, a little bit from the credit union, you know. So, yeah, we, we've gotten grants over the years Perfect. for, you know, when you take back to the, in the 30 years I've been involved with it. We went through some major things when they, back to 83, when they had to tear down the ice surface and all that. And I think I covered that a little bit in there. But. The thing is, they typically want capital investment. That's they don't right. want running or uh, this. operating costs. Yeah. You know, they want to be involved in operating costs. And that's our problem. Yeah. It's not really the capital. Like, our facility is quite new now and fixed up. It's operating costs. You could charge more too, but then again, you seem to lose people. They say, oh, well, you know, we don't want to pay that much. We'll go Curl and Bozeman. You know, and I think that happened two or three years ago. We put some of the fees up and some of the team says, oh, we're just going to go to Bozeman and Curl. It's cheaper there. And that's, that's the problem you have in an area where you have a curling rink 10 miles away there and another one, well, not down there anymore, but, uh, you know, so, and you can't ask for a better facility. Anybody will tell you it's one of the better facilities in the province. Absolutely. You know. right. But there was a couple other things I didn't mention in there when I talked to, to about four years ago the, the, the dishwasher and the curling rink went and they're, these are expensive. They're not your household type things. They're about 8,000. Two members of the club paid for it. Okay, charitable donation again. Um, but 10 years ago, we went to Jedi system, which we have at the arena. And I can't remember the cost, probably between 15 and 20,000. We got a provincial grant and the other half that was paid by a member. One single member donated it. So it's just showing you how much money they're putting in and how long will this go on if something else goes and stuff like that. But anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> no, I you, get, you get the picture, I think. Well, I, you know, <laughs> I think a few of us have, have been curlers. A few of us have sat on the board. I said I was president for yeah, a number of years, yeah. and, and it has a, definitely a special place in my heart, and, and I know how the operation was, and, and what the bingo used to do, you know, it paid basically for your, your hydro bills, yeah. and since that downfall, and then of course COVID has put a lot of pressure on, on the facility, yeah. and we do have a, a, a one facility in, in this town, yeah. and a lot of some, a lot of people in the community don't realize, if they're not curlers, that the building actually doesn't belong to the town. Uh, well, some people think it belongs to the town, yes. and it's not. It's it's a it's a freestanding, self-sustaining uh, uh, building that uh, is owned by the membership, so much of the golf course. So uh, yeah, definitely, there's some challenges there, and you know, council will definitely have a you know, you know come up with some different ideas and, and look at this, you know. But I know that you you and your board have some tough decisions ahead too, and, and hopefully can. You know, turn around. It's a good thing that safety is back say again that, this, uh, this, fall, this Friday. Councillor Friesen, I can remember back probably close to 30 years ago when I came out of the Paw and got here, and and Phil and, and, and her, her hubby and uh, her two daughters. They used to have a lot of auctions in the summertime, eh? Well, who was in the work back there? Phil and her two daughters and Augie were back there, and this this went on for years. You know, some people just put on so much time, and there was no pay for that. You know what I mean? There was no, it was all volunteer. Yeah. But anyway. Sure. <laughs> Just a question regarding uh, COVID relief. Uh, you did say that you did take advantage of all the COVID relief funds that were available. Mm -hmm. What did that, um, what did that do for the organization? Did it help you run through the, through the season? Was there surplus left over? What did that look like? I didn't seem to notice that on the financials. Yeah. Um, it was, it was good. The only thing was that we, like, 
Jerry had mentioned that we'd put the ice in and we only got two or three draws in and then we had to shut down. So that, and then we kept the ice in for a considerable length of time with basically no more income. And so that chewed it up, chewed up the COVID relief payments we did get. I mean, they were fantastic. It, you know, it, it kept us afloat there, the provincial government and the federal government. We took advantage of both of them, but eventually it, it just, it's now been eaten away by operating costs. Go ahead, Jerry. Yeah, we got, we got 40 from the federal, that's what I remember. And we had to return 30 by the end of 2023. That's correct. So we used the 10,000 that we could use and we are, we don't have to pay it back. And that was used by basically for the taxes. I meant to say cook and cook last year for, uh, for paying our sure. insurance, which covers around that. But we still have that money, but I mean, we're not going to use it if we can help it. Because sooner or later, we're going to have to pay it back. Exactly, yes. You know, we're just keeping it there, sort of. I mean, there's no, no interest on it or anything else, so the government, we might as well keep it for the government, and hopefully we never have to use it. Bernice, do you have anything to add? No, Are you sure? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. And, is there any other questions? I've talked too much. No, so. no, you covered it all. Very well. <clears throat> Go ahead. I guess you know. Uh, it was kind of shocking to hear the the number your numbers get affected that much. You know, we go from 18 teams down to eight teams. Uh, it's probably going to be more than a year or two to rebuild those numbers. So this is probably something you know. If council does look at this, it might be for more than more than one year. I, I, I'm guessing, I guess, correct me if I'm wrong, I guess is what I'm asking, but it's probably something that, that you guys are going to be in a, in a pickle for a couple of years here. Yeah. I guess the way I look at it is, is I look at it the way as, as NEPA does it for their, for their curling club. They just don't pay taxes, and that's, that's it. And, and that would be the nicest thing for us because, go ahead, sorry. So does, does Nipua have a, a bar in theirs? Yeah, they have a bar and a kitchen. Because the way we read the act is you don't have to pay taxes on, on the, because it's a non-profit, you don't have to, the town has uh, exempted the taxes on everything except the, the licensed portion of it. The, the, that's, what, that's what drives it and it comes out of the uh, Cannabis and Liquor Act that that portion has to pay taxes. We can we can forgive them, but we'd have to like we'd have we'd have to give a, a grant and and you know equivalent to it. But so I'm not sure how Nipawa does it if they have a bar and they're not charging them taxes. No, this is the, the municipal tax I'm talking about, yeah. not the tax in relationship to the business itself. As the this is this is what I'm talking about too is the municipal tax on the portion that serves alcohol. That's over my head. Yeah. Sorry. We we can look into that. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Councillor uh, Morgan. Um, I forget your name, sir, but uh, uh, I think Brendan and Lana might whack me on the head here, but you had mentioned about how your facility sits predominantly empty all summer. Do you have or have come up with or looking at a strategy on how to promote um, people potentially renting your facility in the summer? You know, it's always been available to rent. Uh, the thing is that we've never thought of it so much as a summer use thing. We generally turn all the liquor in, mm -hmm. although our liquor license is good all year. So I'm thinking that we're going to retain liquor and try and advertise ourselves for small receptions upstairs that can hold mm -hmm. roughly 100 people. Um, and we need to promote that more. And it's something we need to work on. Like small meetings? or Yeah, and small like meetings, yeah. We have uh, a good spot mm -hmm. for that. And there's a kitchen right there, of course. And if they want bar service, I guess it would be available. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Councillor White. And big receptions down below on the ice. Guys. Our fish guys used it once, once for sure. <coughs> yes, and we have Grad. Grad is our next biggest fundraiser, like, uh, and it's Friday, of course. Uh, I don't know that, like, I think the the hall over here gets most of the wedding reception. I don't know that you'd get a big enough one to yeah. use our ice surface, but I mean, it certainly would be an option if somebody had a huge one. 
Okay, so we're seriously talking about doing it again next year and using the same facility as we did your facility. Yes, the skating rink isn't ready for people on there yet. So. No. Yeah. And that was good too, yeah. I mean, those types of bigger functions are great for us, yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know about a, a wedding reception again, but where you have five or six hundred people, I don't know that there's that many of those. No, we, we had one a number of years ago, I forget who it was, a wedding, and then we had the fishing game used to have their do there. But it is, we can, we can take up to 600 in the ice area as far as uh, liquor. Also freezing. Aaron Emmacher's wedding was in. Aaron Emmacher's wedding was in the curling room. Because you got a good memory. Yeah. Oh, I just remember the big round tables. It just looked so nice. Yeah. Okay. And well, we don't have near. We don't have hardly any auctions anymore. We. I don't know when the last auction we had. We have in uh, just after rodeo. We have the um, um, a circus type thing coming up from uh, Oklahoma or something. A one day thing. That's a one day. Uh, but we'll see. Okay. Well, we've taken all your information here. Yep. Any other member of council has any other questions? If not, we do thank you for coming in. We'll, we'll look at this seriously, and uh, we'll get back to you, okay? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gary, are you the president? I see you. Thank you. You've got the feet in your street. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure? Hey. Are you sure? <laughs> Not positive, but I must be getting there. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> See you, Jerry. Uh -uh. <clears throat> yeah, I think I have more questions. I can answer. How's that? Three years. Thanks, Jerry. Oh, just okay. so council knows, there is no resolution on this agenda for that. So if one of the council wanted to bring it to the table, I think there's some questions that we need to yeah. figure out first, and yeah. I have some ideas too. So. <clears throat> Councillor uh, Delore. So e even though there's no resolution, will there be an uh, item on the agenda to be able to discuss this? Yeah, we will we'll definitely okay. talk about it, yeah. Okay, let's go on to our next delegation, 4.2. We have uh, CFO Ganita uh, with us and uh, uh, on the uh, Federal Gas Tax Funding Annual Expenditure Report with uh, Mr. Hardy. Who's uh, taking the floor there first? Uh, Terry will. Okay. CFO Gadida, go ahead. So uh, it's a one pager. We started the year with the unspent fund balance from the previous years of 849603 received 441859 from the province, earned $5,704 of interest. <laughs> and spent 151971 on local roads, and that was 119985 on the Main Street curb and gutter, and 31987 on sidewalks. So the unspent fund balance at the end of the year is $1,145,195. And then there's the cumulative column there with the numbers since the federal gas tax program came into being however many years ago. So in total, the town has received 3,562,435 from the province, earned $77,000 of interest, spent 757,000 on local roads, 503,000 on drinking water infrastructure, 981,000 on wastewater infrastructure, 221,000 on solid waste projects, and uh, $31,000 on disaster mitigation. Total spent <coughs> the money so far, 2,494,624. questions? Councilor Delorier. Um, I know it, it doesn't uh, say this in this report, but maybe one of you guys might know, but 
I'd heard that, or I one time was told that uh, that each year's contribution has to be spent within five years. Do you know of, of that 1.2 million left? Um, I guess just judging by the number, I know we used to get considerably less than the 441. So is any of that in risk of, you know, coming to the five year uh, window? Or am I, am I out to lunch and all of that? Yeah, we, we need to spend that money. Uh, we're, we're not in risk of losing it yet, but... Okay. Any other questions? Councilor Deloria. S second question. Um, I know, I think it was a, a year or so ago, the criteria for, for eligible projects was expanded so somewhat. Is there, you know, and I know previous, it probably fit in those five categories that, that are up there on the screen. Pretty, pretty neatly. Is there a, any documentation on, on what that those expanded uh, uh, things might look like and would they would say recreation grants like we just talked about earlier would that would any of that thing like that fall into there? All right, yeah, right. all this has to be spent on capital right? Yeah capital projects yeah. and, and uh, yes recreation is the major addition to the list of eligible projects recreation facilities. Councillor Bovic. So that's about 2021. This is what we're looking at right here, but if I'm reading it right. Yes, year ended December 31, so, 2021. So will there be more gas tax money coming in 22? Oh, Correct. Yeah. Correct. Another 442,000 in 2022. <laughs> Thank you. Councilor Morio. Uh, Mr. Gadita, would it be only 220 some thousand because last year was doubled, so it would be back to its normal this year? Yeah, that's that's right. Last year was doubled, so it'll be back to the 200,000. Sorry about that. Okay, yeah. And then that number is not reflective of what we put or plan to expand out of it this year and this year's capital budget. Correct. <coughs> okay, further questions? Yes. Councilor Bobbing. Councilor Mario spoke on it. The number doesn't reflect last year's? Number. This year's. This year's number. Yeah, so the budget year. doesn't reflect this year's. No, that, that this is one year. Right here. Yeah, so. but it doesn't reflect the 200 and some thousand that's coming this year. Correct. You'll Nor the expenditures this year. Yeah, exactly. Okay, uh, looks like there's no other uh, questions. Um, Mr. Hardy. All right, so my part is uh, the, um, the requirements for the federal gas tax revenue expenditure report require that it have an auditor's report uh, attached to it. Uh, it's not a full financial statement audit, it's a more of an audit of compliance and our auditor's report indicates that, that We've audited, uh, we audit the Town of Snow River's compliance with the criteria that has been established by the terms and conditions of this municipal gas tax agreement. And it came into effect back in April 1st of 2014. And it's between the province, in this particular one, between the province of Manitoba and the Town of Swan River. So management is responsible for compliance with the criteria that was established by the provisions of the agreement and for such internal controls as management determines is necessary to ensure compliance. And uh, as I've commented on in past uh, audit reports, uh, the internal controls for the town of Swan River are extremely high and they're well maintained. And uh, our audit report will reflect that they are um, ensuring that compliance with the, uh, with the criteria uh, has been followed. So our responsibility is to express an opinion on this compliance. We conduct our audit, the same as we do with the financial statement audit, uh, just following slightly different rules with uh, accordance with Canadian generally accepted auditing standards, uh, because we're not looking at a whole financial statement, just a, um, an expenditure report. Uh, so, but we still have to plan and perform an audit to obtain reasonable assurance 
whether the Taos whatever complies with the criteria established and um, where applicable assessing the accounting principles and significant estimates made by management. Now we do believe that the audit evidence that we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion and our opinion is that the uh, report presents fairly in all material respects the funding and expenditures for the year ended December 31st, 2021, in compliance with the municipal <coughs> gas tax agreement. So it's a clear audit opinion and there's no reservations or qualifications. Anybody have any questions on that? Doesn't appear to be so. So with, so with that, um, I guess I have to thank you, uh, Mr. Hardy, for that report, <coughs> and also to CFO Grida for, um, for the uh, report as well. I appreciate it, and we thank you all. Thank you. Just got to find my place here. Do you refresh? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, Okay, so moving on to 6, 6 6.1 uh, communications. Result of the building permits 23, 22 through 26, 22, will the total estimated value of $418,600 be received? Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 7.1, result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Bobic. Discussion? Councillor White? A, a couple questions. I see that uh, you contacted highways <coughs> regarding the potholes. Any success? Uh, yeah, Jordan's talking to them. We're going to do a little teamwork to get those fixed up. Optimistic they'll get fixed? Yeah. Okay. What, what are valid and safety lines? Uh, so we have a self-retracting uh, <coughs> safety line at the water treatment plant that the guys use for the filters and uh, it needs to get recertified every five years and so the distributor uh, is in Ontario or the company when you call it Ontario but one of their distributors is in Regina which is about so I'm just contacting them to get it recertified. Thank you. Anything further? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 7.2 reports, 7.3 council and CAO reports, CAO reports. I'll start with Deputy Mayor and Tony. <clears throat> um, just one comment from me, I guess, and that is in regards to, well, actually two comments. Uh, um, thank you, Your Worship, for all of what you did with uh, uh, Aboriginal days today and your all the efforts you did with that thank you so much and, and uh, yeah we appreciate that the other one is uh, a heartfelt uh, my heartfelt con condolences I guess to all those that were affected by the other night's storm in, in our uh, RM of Swan Valley West um, and of course we are not only the town of Swan River, but we are the valley and when your heart bleeds in that area we all bleed and it was uh, quite the disaster and to those who are affected you definitely have my attention and respect uh, that's all I have today thank you thank you and thanks for those words Councillor Morion <coughs> um, I echo what uh, Deputy Mayor with Tony said about Aboriginal days and along with the fortunate storm that was in us Swan Valley West uh, and last week uh, attended our regular Pell meeting where a number of issues were discussed um, also um, been working on uh, a number of uh, potential draft bylaws um, regarding in protective services with uh, unsightly grass and types that as compared to uh, other communities um, that have some of the um, issues, same issues, but uh, simplified uh, bylaws with just respect to grass versus unsightly properties, potentially separating those things. So I'll be comparing notes um, and information with. Uh, uh, Chief of work is also working on the, the same same project on that. So, um, also uh, be working on and presenting to council. Um, uh, I guess a, 
a detailed uh, information PowerPoint package regarding uh, the, the potential purchase of our fire truck here as to the pros and cons, uh, comparing the units that we're looking at, um, <coughs> pros and cons versus new versus any potential used out there. So uh, sort of an amalgamation of all the information that we got and then bring it to, uh, to one of our cow meetings where I can uh, uh, present to you guys <coughs> the pros and cons, the needs, and the good and the bad, the ugly about it. So, um, so hopefully that'll be done uh, when I get back in a couple of weeks. Awesome. Okay, and that's all I got. Okay, thank you, Councillor Friesen. Uh, tomorrow morning I have a meeting with Urban Forest, um, Joy Winstock, and <coughs> Mary Snellgrove. So. I'm not quite sure what they want, but we're going to find out. Thanks to uh, Terry's Greenhouse and to Eggie's. The flowers are in on the boulevard out here on 1083. Um, and yes, that's, that's all we have, I guess. Uh, thanks for the new flags up here. They look great. Also, I'm wondering about the sign by the bridge that says Swan River. You can hardly read it because it's terrible. Who would replace that? Highways. Highways. So is that me? I should tell tell them. Or uh, would you tell them? It's where, it? the high right at the bridge. It's the river. It's the actual river label. It says okay. Swan River, but you'd never know it by looking at it. So, if they could replace that with something. Nice. It would be nice. A new one. A new one, yes. And congrats to all the grads. This is the weekend of their safe grad, Friday, curly rink. Volunteer, volunteer. So hopefully they'll have a nice day and all the best to them in the future. That's it. Thank you. Councilor Bobby. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just to uh, same comment about uh, the storm the other night. I was just wondering if we could reach out and uh, offer any assistance that we possibly have to our neighbors there if they need anything that the town of Swan River could or offer any help just even reaching out to them. Uh, the municipality, maybe the village of Anita or there if we could would be great. Mine. Uh, thank you for the information that you're bringing forward to. I was going to ask that question. That would be really great. That would be help make decisions here in the future. Uh, I'd just like to speak a little bit. Uh, Deputy Mayor, when Tony asked about Curry Road here, we have a discussion on it there. So I guess maybe if we could just kind of refresh what we spoke about on Curry Road there about the paving and the intersection there. That, that would probably be coming up in the future. Yeah, it would be a local improvement for the paving. So, okay, so would that be something that would be on next year's agenda, possibly, or would, how would that go? How would that move forward? Uh, yeah, in uh, August I'll be starting to look at that, and that's a potential one for a local improvement. And then there's a process that has to go, they all have to get informed, and yeah. then uh, they get a chance to kind of yay or nay it, okay. depending on the percentages it proceeds or doesn't proceed. So I would be under the impression that the price of that payment would be by lending a foot to the properties? That's correct. That's currently how our local improvements are set up because we had one that was done by uh, a percentage. And that was one of the main complaints was that your letter says it's going to be this, but it says it's, it's an estimate. So what if it's more? So we changed it so that it's a per foot rate. So when we set out the letter, that's what it'll be yes or no, uh, based exactly on that amount. <clears throat> the price will be based on as if there was two properties or properties on either side of the road that the town will have to absorb that cost on the other side of the road because there's only one side of that street. Yeah, it would, essentially when those prices were set up, it was set up as if there would be two properties. Yeah, so it would be okay. essentially like we're paying that side. All right, thank you. Uh, just uh, Deputy Mary, uh, I'm Tony there, I just wondered about, in, uh, 
the near future, if we could possibly get a COPP update, maybe talk about it at the next cow meeting or something. Sure. There we go. So that would be great. Thank you. Uh, just to speak a little bit while we were on the subject of uh, federal gas tax money there, we, I, I still, the $48,000 that we received from the province for fixing the potholes, I really would like to see. My personal opinion is that it is spread out as a whole of the town instead of just adding, adding to a paving job. Like, what can you give me an estimate on how many lineal feet that would do? Forty-eight thousand with a new block, two. Uh, I should do a block. I'd have to calculate. Yeah, that. yeah. Uh, just with the federal gas tax money, that would be part of this job that's on the budget this year already. Councilor Bob, and can we just take a break? Uh, no, okay. So sure. Sure. Yeah. Take a walk? Uh, you can take a walk. I don't want water. Okay. Do you need water? Water right here. Okay. All right. Continue. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll just I'll maybe discuss it with you a bit. Then I can call you. Uh, just. Uh, just to, I talked with Mr. Harvey today about. Uh, the watershed will offer a survey to do 4th Street South there just to give you some of the grades on that. They'll also do the public reserve down in there and then give the town of Swan River an idea of what you have to work with in the near future. So it's a, I call it a, a small cost of three to four hundred dollars to end up being from the watershed will be the, to do the whole survey which will give you a, a schematic of what, what you have to work with there. So I'm hoping that Eddie, our manager from Watershed, will be in touch with Mr. Harvey. Uh, just one of the other things I was wanting to speak a bit about was a landfill. Uh, in the policy of the town of Swan River is you can't remove anything from a landfill. Is that the policy? I've read that before, yeah. And <coughs> is there a reason for that? We, we can't remove anything? Yeah. Like other people? Yeah. Uh, that was probably just put in there for safety so that people aren't you know, digging around the middle pile and then getting cut and then coming after us saying, I cut myself at your facility. So it's a discourage kind of rummaging around and also when people dump off their garbage then it's what they know <coughs> people aren't going to go through it and find stuff. I guess I just see that there's, there's been quite a few people that have asked me that, you know, like, oh, I'll use the example of I need a wheel for my lawnmower. There's wheels all over the place, but you can't touch one there. I mean, if we're in the recycle, we're in the recycle one way or the other. There seems to be stuff that could be used again, and I, I don't mean by coming and taking the whole iron pile. Or I don't know how you would want to gauge that or something, but I just, where could we go with this? If people need to reuse something, why wouldn't you reuse it? Use it? Can they not just ask the contractor to say, hey, can I take a wheel off that lawnmower base? Yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure that wouldn't be an issue if it was something as simple as that. But it, like Darren said, if the lawnmower's sitting at the top of a metal pile and the guy has no idea and starts climbing, we're going to have a big problem. So I guess if long as they request it at the way scale or from their operator. I'm, I'm sure it wouldn't be. Okay, so would that be something you would forward to that? <coughs> uh, yeah, I can talk to about that. Okay. Do you have a uh, question? I believe that's about it. Oh, that? Councilor Fraser. The uh, fellows that build things out at the museum, I don't know what they call themselves, man cave, and they need wood, and they asked if they could go to the landfill and go to the back where all that wood and stuff is, if they could take some wood. So who would they, would they talk to? Uh, get them to talk to me because I'll have to see what they're okay. looking at. Alright, oh, thanks. I, I You're just, still on. Just to go back to that, that I guess if they are given permission, they should probably be given a statement that you do this at your own risk. Yeah, we'll have to come up with something. <clears throat> some sort of waiver. And that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Councilor White, you're okay? Yeah. Okay. I want to thank uh, Councillor Bobby for the thought of uh, sending our, our, some of our team out to Swan Valley West. That's a great idea. I want to thank Councillor Morio for the concept of some 
interesting ideas relative to how to have a quarter rate community. Those are <coughs> awesome thoughts. Uh, on a point of interest, uh, Swan Valley Sport Fish and the government had a total put 20,000 Arctic char in Glad Lake in the last 10 days, and that should be a wonderful financial potential boon for our community because people will come from all over North America to fish Arctic char and can catch them. Uh, I went to the interagency meeting at the uh, Elbert Charter Friendship Center on the 9th. A lot of health updates, what people are doing in the community, trying to make things better. And the one thing that popped up that I felt, well, they're all important, was the need for drivers. They, 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 I think uh, you can take your own car, they pay a mileage, they put you up at a hotel, whatever. There's, there's monies available. So if you uh, think you might have some time to be able to drive people who have medical needs or family needs or shopping needs, uh, interagency people will have those contacts. If not, I can find them for those individuals. I went to the Safeguard Barbecue and uh, I just want to compliment the, fa the parents for being out there raising money for the graduates and uh, compliments as you alluded to, Councilor Morio, Councilor Morio, Councilor Friesen, for congratulations to the students. It's, a, it's a 12 years of study, in my case 13, uh, for to get out of high school. Uh, I also attended an Animal Protection League barbecue, and these are all paid for, by the way, you guys. Uh, the Animal Protection League does wonderful things in our community, not paid for by the town, paid for by me. So I just want to thank the Animal Protection League for the wonderful stuff that they do. And the Kinsman dinner, I found a couple of our pals and people there spent, two guys spent $4,000 on, on a breakfast. And uh, most of those monies raised by the Kinsman come right back to Swan River or to the Valley. I want to thank the Kinsmen for the work they do too. Then I had a special Olympics barbecue and uh, what a unique group of men and women, uh, people in need and people helping them. I, I, I can't say enough about the special Olympic volunteers also. Then at the cow meeting on the 14th, uh, did a lot of brainstorming. One of the things that the council has decided to do is we want to get together in a smaller group and look at uh, ideas, what we need, what we can provide to help the Ukrainian community and what they need. And uh, there's all sorts of things happening throughout the province and the nation that right now relative to that, so I hope to tie into a few of those. Then on the 20th, I got the job of representing the mayor at the University College of North uh, pinning ceremony. There are 11 graduates, and I'm hoping all those graduates will stay in Swan River, but I found out there they're not all staying. Some of them didn't know about the monies that uh, this entity has, uh, the Medical Service Committee has uh, got up for them, 3000 bucks at the moment. And I was uh, disappointed in that, but uh, there are some queries going out if that message is going to the LPN graduates locally that there is money here. So we stay optimistic that that will happen. Then uh, this evening I went to the uh, National Indigenous Day uh, from 5 till 6 till 7.04, I'm nearly <coughs> late for the meeting. And what a wonderful concept of bringing the community together. Uh, they had a dinner, but you had to pay for it by yourself. And uh, well, unbelievable dancers. And tomorrow, apparently, we're leaving at 6.30 in the morning for Dawson for municipal meetings. So pretty busy couple weeks there. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for uh, uh, taking part in that pinning ceremony yesterday. That was, was awesome. Councilor Delore. Uh, the only thing I have to report on is we had our library board meeting last Wednesday, and uh, I see we <coughs> chastised in the CAO's reports, but to be happy to know we passed our uh, audited financial statements, so those, I know we're obviously too late for uh, to make that deadline, but I will be reporting back that those need to come in a more timely fashion. I sit on both those boards. The planning district one, I don't, it won't be anytime soon, like not in the next couple of weeks, so I don't, but I, they're always late, so I don't know if you, yeah, well, in the just put a note. I don't know what you guys, how you guys handle that, but anyways, both those I'll be bringing that ba that message back to uh, both the, back to both those boards that those need to happen a lot quicker. Other than that, uh, nothing else to report. <coughs> Thank you. Um, for myself, uh, Councillor White talked a little bit about the uh, interagency and, and specifically service for seniors and. Uh, uh, they, over the time of COVID-19, they had to move to a new location, so they feel that they're not getting as much um, uh, visual uh, as what they need to, to, uh, to get. So anyway, um, their concern was uh, how they can make themselves a little bit more visual, and also to recruit 
and find more drivers uh, in the community to help them transport some of these individuals that need uh, medical care, you know, outside the valley or even as far as Winnipeg. And in the past, it has been that a lot of these people that have been providing that service, now those people are requiring the service. So they're definitely looking for volunteers. They're trying to figure out how they can make themselves a little bit, you know, create a little bit more awareness about them. So I had reached out to the Star and Times, and I believe that they're working on a, on a story about service for seniors, <coughs> seniors um, this week. So hopefully that helps uh, with uh, their organization. And I know that they did talk a little bit about reimbursement for monies for drivers <coughs> and so forth, and, and that has been something that the foundation has been uh, been talking about. So I had spoken with Miss uh, Beaudry about that, and um, that's still in the works. So that answers any of your questions there. Um, Saturday, I had the opportunity to um, attend my first pride and the first pride in the park in in swan river and uh it was uh it was a good event and uh attended by several people and some local people and some people from out of town so we have to give uh, a lot of um kudos to those individuals to uh that have the courage and, and they need to be recognized in our community no matter what so <clears throat> i congratulate them and looking forward to them having their future um, uh, Pride in the Parks in future years. Um, over the weekend we also had uh, the baseball uh, regionals and uh, I heard from Parks and Rec and the people there that were organizing the event, they did an outstanding job so I have to give thank you to uh, Mr. Fedorchuk and his team for working with them and, uh, and getting everything all set up and they were very happy with it. And now we uh, look forward to the provincials in the next few weeks. So get out there and cheer on our Swan River, Swan Valley team, and uh, and hopefully they they do well. Today, as I mentioned earlier, is is uh, National Indigenous Peoples Day, and uh, I got up bright and early this morning at four o'clock and went down and at five, and uh, it was kind of an interesting thing as I was leaving the house, and trust me, I do not leave my house at five o'clock in the morning every day. That's an anomaly for sure. And, uh, and when I was leaving, for some reason I just thought, man, I, the birds are like really loud. <coughs> and I thought, like, they're, is this how they always are? You know? or, so I, I just thought, this is quite interesting. It's maybe it's, it's so quiet, I don't know. So, but the interesting part was when I got to the ceremony, and uh, at the Albert Chartrand Friendship Center, and uh, they had an elder, uh, Edward Cook, that did the, the ceremony. And as he was doing the ceremony, he was saying a prayer for everybody and, uh, and speaking, uh, you know, in their traditional uh, ways. And, and it, was, it was interesting because he was talking about how you speak from your heart and you pray from your heart, not from your mind. And then he started talking about the birds and how loud the birds were. And I was thinking, this is interesting. <coughs> and then he said, um, the birds are telling you in the morning what your day is going to be like and, uh, and what to expect. He said, all you have to do is listen to the birds. <coughs> when you're standing there, we're you know, listening to the birds. So um, I heard a lot of different things, but uh, I can't tell you what they all are. <laughs> But uh, it, anyways, it was, it was a, a great experience and, and uh, I look forward to going back next year and I definitely thank them for inviting me and, and I, I encourage any of you to, to do the same. It's, it's awful early in the morning, but it's, it's a really neat uh, experience. And, and uh, <clears throat> shortly afterwards, and I attended uh, the school division with Lorna Monroe, hosted an event with bunch of the students which is usually in the park but they had to move it to the hall and uh, they had all the kids in there they're doing music and and so forth but we all spoke and and uh, one thing I told them I said you know like from the beginning of, of this term you know it was our goal uh, my goal but our goal was to you know work with our First Nations and our Métis governments and continue to build on that relationship and, and strengthen it. And, and I think that we've done a good job and we do have good relationships with 
Sapatoyad predation and Musqueese epic, and also with the MMF and, and with uh, uh, Ms. Chartrand, uh, Vice President Chartrand. So we're on the right track, and, and this is all to do with reconciliation, and, uh, and I think we're doing a good job, and, and we'll continue to do the best we can and keep on working with, um, with, those, uh, with those governments. And, uh, and also, last, I guess, and it was mentioned earlier, but uh, our grads that we have in the Valley, no matter the Swan Valley Regional Secondary School, our, our First Nations grads, and, uh, and of course our uh, LPN pinning ceremony today. All our grads, we can <coughs> congratulate them and, and we wish them all the best of the future. And uh, gosh, if we can retain and keep them here and, and have jobs for them in the Valley, we'd certainly like to keep them here. So we do wish them all the best and, uh, and move forward. <coughs> That's for me. And uh, anything from you, Mr. Poole? Uh, yeah, uh, first, just an apology to Councillor Delore for my lack of communication. I, I definitely could have given you a call being represented on that board instead of basting you on that. Oh, well, that's all right. I should, I should, I've been on there long enough. I should, I should have known. Uh, just a meeting this Thursday with Minnetonan Goldman to discuss purchase services that's booked. The water agreement is with the lawyer uh, for Swan Valley West. They'll receive it when the lawyer is done. Uh, just to mention, glad to see a lot of land sales happening uh, over the past couple weeks. Been working on those. Uh, the Walker Trail and Mackenzie Bay subdivision was finally approved, so we should be able to to finalize that subdivision in the next couple weeks. We should be getting a package from the province. Uh, and then just working on, just to mention, working on bylaws. The Accommodation, business license, animal control bylaws. Uh, so prepare for those drafts in a couple of weeks. That's it. Okay. Any questions or comments to Mr. Poole's report? Okay. Okay, uh, Council um, Morio. Hey, it's not to Mr. Poole's report, but I forgot to mention uh, I wanted to give a shout out um, to the, our fire department for open out opening their having their open house that was very well attended um, a lot of the firefighters uh, gave up their evening to uh, tour and uh, show a bunch of families and kids the ins and outs of our fire hall and the fire apparatus and whatnot and it was uh, um, I guess it went over um, well beyond their expectations so uh, Good. it's an appreciation to Chief Rorchuk and his crew uh, for hosting that Good. Yes, uh, Chief Vodorchuk, thank you and thank your entire team and I do apologize that uh, I was not able to attend. I will pass it on. Thank you. Thank you, Council Morio. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Council Morio, did you have something? Alrighty, so moving on, 8, 8.1. <clears throat> Resolved the Northwest Roundup and Exhibition being held July the 28th to the 31st, 2022 in the <coughs> town of Swan River be declared a significant community event. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Oh, yes. Uh, result of the June 21st, 2022 regular meeting of council agenda be amended to add a discussion <laughs> on the community center delegation. Moved by Councilor Delorier, seconded by Councilor Morio. All in favor? It's carried. So with that, community center delegation 9.2. I'll open it up. Discussion. Councilor Morey, did you want to elaborate maybe a little bit more on what your thoughts were? Um, yeah, um, I guess thinking of the ins their insurance, if they're through a private entity, um, I'm sure administration can contact our <coughs> our provider and see um, if they can be tagged on, just like all the other organizations that are with ours, and see 
uh, would that increase costs to our policy <coughs> and see if there's any potential savings there that may or may not be equal to or greater than uh, what they're paying in uh, municipal taxes for that uh, um, portion of the uh, community centre that is taxable. Um, as uh, <coughs> Councillor Glory um, had mentioned, uh, uh, according to uh, Mr. Benita's report, that a large chunk of the centre is already um, non-taxable <coughs> because it's a charitable organisation. But uh, if they were um, fully taxable, that would be a $26,000 or $26,000 plus invoice that they'd be receiving from the community versus the, the amount that they're getting now, which is just for the square footage <coughs> that's under the uh, liquor license. So but, uh, but if administration can get that back to us before we make a final decision, yeah. uh, I may have some other um, thoughts uh, that I can forward to that. <coughs> but, uh, depending on the result of that, um, I might be interested uh, or I wouldn't be against entertaining a discussion for maybe a one year grant in lieu of and not a repetitive and see where things go. Uh, this year is a transition year for the majority of anybody or organizations uh, just coming out of COVID and getting back to um, uh, things uh, or normal operations. But, uh, uh, but basically, uh, I really don't want to get into the habit of now subsidizing everybody because um, it's, it's ratepayers' money, so it's just uh, um, it's going against a lot of the philosophies that we put that out there that it's user pay. If you're using the service, you're the ones paying for it. So by giving us a per turning this into a, maybe a, a potentially permanent grant in lieu of, um, now that's passing a cost onto all non-users versus just users itself. So, um, but, uh, I'll, I'll wait to see what administration comes back on that. So. Councilor DeLore. A um, couple of things. First is, if we do give a grant, if it's over $5,000, they need to have an audit. That's correct. So, um, and base, basically the amount of tax relief they're looking for is about $8,000. And the total insurance bill is ten thousand dollars. So even if they come with us, I'm sure it's, I'm sure we're not going to be able to provide them eight thousand dollars of relief just based on insurance savings. So, um, you know, I, I agree we should look into to Councilor Moore's suggestion, but but I think they're they're asking you know they're asking for more than probably what that relief would be just based on the insurance alone. So that's not going to cut it. Um, we don't have anything budgeted for this. They, too bad they didn't come a few months ago. As far as, as far as uh, you know, a recreational organization, they've done a good job for a long time on standing on their own two feet. And, and you know, I, I think they, I, I think they probably didn't want to have to take this step. So I think it's probably pretty serious the fact that they did take this step because we've never had to help them out in, in any way in a long time so they've been really self-sufficient so I commend them for that um, they support a lot of users on no public money and right next door to them there's probably not many more users or maybe even less that are getting about a quarter million dollars to subsidize their recreation habits so I think we need to keep that in perspective too if uh, Maybe if we have to uh, find some savings in in the in the arena budget to uh, give them a, a, a one time grant this year, I, th I think we need to look at that because you know we, we on people's hockey habits we spend about a quarter million bucks. I'm sure we can find four or five thousand dollars worth of savings in that in that uh, arena budget that maybe we can uh, that we could give them a, a grant to help them get back on their own two feet. They've never asked very much of us, and I I don't get the sense that that's an organization that, you know, if they can't help it, they don't want to make this a habit. Um, but they, they also did mention that if push came to shove, they, they'd be forced to make a decision on whether, you know, maybe not this year, maybe not next year, but coming down the pipe, we've seen what happened in Men's Homes' Curling Club, they no longer have one. I, I, I think it'd be, 
be, if we don't do something to help them at least transition, as Councillor Moore has said, we may be uh, faced with the even tougher decision, you know, uh, in, in not too short amount of time. Um, so I, I think we should pursue what Councillor Moore said, but also uh, maybe get a report from Mr. Fedorchuk if there's anything in that arena budget that, or in recreation in general, that we, if we can find something that can be deferred for, for a year or for six months until, until 2023, just to help them out for this, uh, for this year. <coughs> um, I guess I'm thinking four or $5,000 to keep it under that $5,000 limit so it doesn't trigger, uh, doesn't trigger a, uh, an audit in conjunction with whatever savings we can find from Mr. Morio's idea might get us close to that $8,000 uh, number. So those are just my thoughts anyways. Uh, I had two pieces. My first part was, I know that we all saw Mr. Ganita's report, but I'm wondering if he can just uh, maybe speak to us and give uh, the Coles version of that report just for everybody to understand. See Phil Ganita. Yeah, so uh, as was mentioned, uh, center is uh, mostly exempt the only taxable portion is uh, is the portion that's used for profit or as licensed premises <coughs> but you're getting a cannabis control act and so if if the entire facility was taxable their property tax bill would be triple what it is now so they are already getting a considerable savings Okay. And, and the, the assessment uh, branch is the <laughs> mental assessment services is the one that determines how much of the facility is, is uh, being operated for profit or as licensed premises. And so they are the ones that determine the taxable portion versus the exempt portion. We have no control. The town has no control over that. Yeah, and then that moves back to what Councillor Deloria had said about the taxable portion because of the profitable piece inside the building. Okay, yeah, Thank two. you. And then number two is, <clears throat> <clears throat> I, I think I need a, a little more time to think about it. Uh, if this is something that uh, council goes ahead and, and does, I think that we're seeing declining um, in all areas of uh, volunteerism, in all areas of extracurricular, I think that there, we're seeing declining numbers. If we do this, if this is done for one organization, and I understand it's been a great organization, and there's no doubt about it that they've done a really good job taking care of it on their own, but my biggest fear is if we do it for one, <clears throat> what's to say that it shouldn't be applied for everyone? So I, I guess that's my thoughts. I, I don't necessarily like picking and choosing, and uh, what is good for one is generally good for the other, whether or not they claim that they need it or don't need it for that specific period. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Councilor White and Councilor Delorier. I agree uh, completely with Councilor Morio and Councilor Delorier. Uh, they're well, wonderful, well organized, well used by the community organization. and. Hopefully we'll find the money through uh, our system itself. If not, I'd certainly be in favor of giving them a grant once. But, uh, I, I appreciate <coughs> Councillor uh, Matoni's thought there. But, uh, yeah. We don't do things because we're afraid everybody else is going to ask for it. We probably wouldn't do anything sometimes. So if everybody else for it, we'll deal with each one individually as they come. Councillor DeLaurier? I guess just in response to Councilman Tony's comments, I completely agree with him 100%. If you do it for one, it's pretty hard to not do it when somebody else comes asking. And this is, I think, the exact situation we're in. We subsidize hockey to an incredible amount that ha happens to be uh, uh, some people's re recreation of choice. And now we have another rec facility who's coming and asking for a, a rounding error in what we what we provide to uh, to uh, you know the, the hockey facilities you know so I, I think you're absolutely right but we've already we've already got gone to that step where we've we've said okay we're going to subsidize these people's uh, recreation of choice 
So it does make it, I fully agree, it does make it hard when now somebody else is coming and saying, we need a little bit of help. So where we help out, there, there's a, a small portion of this community that has a, 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 you know, that puts their children in hockey or plays hockey, and it is heavily subsidized. And I think we need to keep that in mind. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Um, I think I would like, add a little bit more to that also um, by looking at it like they are a very self-sustaining uh, organization for a, a number of years and um, like you say uh, Council Gloria that to us that could potentially be a rounding error uh, for the amount they're asking versus what our total recreation budget would be um, but if they get to a point where they can't manage their operations and it goes for tax sale and we're likely the ones that's going to inherit that. Um, this <coughs> will be exponentially more costly to the rest of the community than what they're asking for right now. So, um, <coughs> so it's, it's, it's something that we definitely have to uh, look at uh, seriously. Um, it's like we subsidize uh, almost every other um, recreation facility and organization to some point already in in this community um, and basically this is almost one that we we don't so but like just off the top of my head I can't think of any other one that's we're not we don't have our fingers in by putting some great money in there some at some point so <coughs> um, it's not that I <coughs> want to but I think we have to be realistic here and sometimes looking shorter at, at what's here versus that big apple that might hit us like a freight train down the road. Um, I think we've all experienced that one before where we've inherited uh, the Veterans Hall where it was self-sustaining and then we inherited that and with a lot of the improvements and uh, requirements to bring that up to where the point it is now. And that was a facility that has the potential to where it is now to make revenue. Um, on a almost consistently daily, year-round basis versus this one uh, is very limited in its capability to make revenue. So something that we definitely have to um, maybe bring back to the next call meeting to when we have more of that information and go forward. And then on part of that bigger structure is that we maybe have to take a bigger look at uh, this whole recreation thing. Um, <coughs> so, thanks. I guess not to be the dead horse, but I just want to speak on this one more time as far as, you know, I, I think it'd be, uh, you know, I, I don't want to project how I, how I might feel on, on any members of the community, but I'd be pretty insulted if, if you, you know, we didn't offer some relief. They're, they're almost being punished for being so good and so self-sustaining for so long, whereas uh, the hockey programs... We're talking about borrowing $4 million here. We're having two, two open houses in, in uh, a couple of weeks to do $4 million worth of upgrades to the arena. And we're not even entertaining any of these subjects about, or any of these topics we're talking about tonight about, about are we even right to, to subsidize someone's recreation habits. Um, it's almost a given that, hey, it's the rink. We're going we're gonna to make sure that we upgrade the rink, which, you know, I'm not saying that I'm arguing yet that we shouldn't uh, take care of our asset as far as the arena goes but I think we got to keep in mind at the end of the day it's somebody's recreation of choice that that is you know we're, we're gonna add four million dollars of of uh, debt to the town and we're going to uh, you know the the annual debenture payment on that is going to be uh, orders of magnitude bigger than what th these people are at it, at asking for and it really would seem in my mind that they're being punished for for you know, nobody nobody questions whether whether hockey or or the arena or figure skating or whatever goes on at the, at the rink should that money should be spent, and yet there that those programs are are far less self sustaining and far they stand on their own two feet far less than than what what the curling club does. So, um, you know, I, I think I, you know, I just encourage you all to keep that in mind. That boy, it's it, the optics of it. Are something that need to be considered when, you know what, in in a perfect world, in my perfect world, it would all be user pay, but it ain't obviously user pay. We're not even contemplating asking the the minor uh, 
hockey and, and clubs to to foot the bill for the uh, four million dollars of upgrades that are that are coming down the pipe here that are going to be uh, we're having an open house on in a couple of weeks time so you know I think we obviously have all voted for a budget that doesn't contain user pay recreation as much as philosophically we think that it should maybe go that way and maybe we try to inch it that way but we haven't inched it anywhere even close so I think we need to uh, if it's not going to be that way for everybody and we and you know what there's going to be subsidized recreation we need to keep that in mind on on uh, a lot of the organizations in the community and I have, I have the same fears that, uh, that Councilman Tony does that you know what now we're going to get knocks on the door from this club and this club and this club and I guess right now we have this club here asking for it and or maybe they're the first of ten, or maybe they're just one that that needs a little bit of help right now. That this is the decision we have in front of us. I don't know about the other nine that might be falling behind, and so I, I don't want to maybe base it on speculation and, and what I think might happen. I think I, I I need to deal with what is in front of me right now. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> well, with that said, uh, thank you. Uh, well said. Um, I think that we will. Uh, find out some of that information, and then we will defer it to uh, uh, one of our cows. That's right. Yeah. Have. <clears throat> we'll find out the insurance information, uh, possible savings in the arena, and when we get that information, get it on the calendar. Okay. Thank you. Okay, moving on, 10 accounts, 10 point <coughs> results of <coughs> draft audited federal gas tax funding annual expenditure report for the year ended December 31st, 2021, be approved. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? <coughs> it was All easy to understand. Yeah, no kidding, eh? <clears throat> All in favor? It's carried. Thanks again, uh, CFO Ganita. 10.2, resolve, resolve that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 29014 to number 29085, totaling $328,641.99 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5106 to number 5113, totaling $100,498 as listed on Schedule B. Payroll accounts checks number 5114 to 5119, totaling $14,780.04 as listed on Schedule C. Payroll accounts checks number 5120 to number 5126, totaling $98,471 and 64 cents as listed on Schedule D, and direct deposits totaling 16,772 and two cents as listed on Schedule E. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wintoni, seconded by Councillor Bobick. Discussion, Councillor White. Uh, 29028, the uh, Columbarium inscription for $330. Uh, what does, what do you, is that somebody's name on a plaque? Name, yeah, and uh, a little diagram, a little drawing. 330 bucks. Do we uh, put our RFPs out for that, or we just whoever sends it to us? <coughs> uh, that was the last one that we'll be paying. Now it's uh, when they purchase it. <coughs> Whatever they want on it. Yeah. Perfect, don't need to talk to anymore. <coughs> Okay. Councilor Bobbitt. Uh, 002942 is Univac <coughs> Solutions, Canada, Manitoba. Univac? Yeah. That's uh, ferric sulfate for the lagoon. So it reacts with the phosphorus and then settles out. So is this something we do every year? Yeah. We have to get the phosphorus limit below 1.0 milligrams per liter. Uh, it was like 4.3 when we start, which is usually is between 4 and 5. And uh, so we have to add a few batches until we get it below 1 and then we can discharge. And that's uh, a provincial requirement and a federal requirement. 
That regulation came in in 2016? 2016, yeah, because I was here for a year and then we had to have it in effect. So, yeah, since 2016 we've been doing that. Is there any other way of doing that? Is it uh, a chemical? Yeah, there's alum, which uh, we're potentially going to try this year. You have to take, you have to put a little bit more of it in. Uh, but depending on our water chemistry, might be a little bit cheaper. The ferret's nice to use in the springtime because <coughs> she was right to the limits. Uh, so it lets us get it in quicker to get that number down so that we can get discharging. Because uh, this year, just with more rain, it was uh, pretty high. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Councillor Memorial. Uh, number 29052 uh, to uh the garbage dumpster wheels. Place. Uh, how do those things go missing? Uh, they get damaged okay. from repetitive use, lifting and setting down. So they get uh, just over time, they get broken. So then we get a batch of them and then slowly replace them. So, roughly with that $5,700, how many is that buying? Uh, I'll have to check with our mechanic and let you know. Okay. Hopefully, they're not gold plated. I don't think so. Maybe that's why we're missing. <laughs> Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.3. Whereas the capital budget for the year 2022 included $160,000 for loader to be borne by machinery replacement reserve. And whereas the Town of Swan River Council resolved at its meeting held May 3rd, 2022, that the Town of Swan River purchased a Komatsu WA270-80 rubber tire loader from SMS Equipment for $161,667.77 plus applicable taxes. And whereas said loader has been purchased at a cost net of GST, including demonstration travel, of $173,738.87. Therefore, it be resolved that the $173,738.87 be transferred from the machine, Machinery Replacement Reserve Fund to the General Operating Fund. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Different Mayor Wintoni. Discussion, Councillor Bobic. Uh, got a bill here for 181336. Uh, that, as, as the resolution states, net of GST. Net of GST. Oh, so that's off of there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Friesen? <coughs> yes. Do you have a question? <laughs> no. Okay, Councillor uh, Morio. Um, I can't remember if I, I, we, I asked this before. Uh, we had it in a capital budget 160000 and the invoices <coughs> 81 or 171. Um, is there anything that we need to do since we're going over what we budgeted for, for it? Or this. We have the reserve for it, so we're with this resolution, and that's everything we need to do. Is that correct, CFO? We need it? Yes, municipalities can take from special purpose reserves at, at any time as long as the money's being used for the purpose that the reserve was set up. If we were borrowing, we would have had to go back. Okay, that's it. Okay. Um, so, with that, now that we've we're taking more than intended out of your reserve. How is that affecting that reserve fund? Okay. Uh, we'll still be all right. Uh, it's a little bit more, but not significantly more. So we'll be tightening the belt on it. Hope for a reduction in the next purchase. Uh, yeah, hopefully it'll be under you. Okay. Maybe not uh, be so fine on your next <laughs> budget one. Yeah. Okay, good. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> Result of the financial statements for the five months ending May 31st, 2022,
be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wintoni. Discussion? <coughs> Councillor uh, Moore. Um, I know that tax bills haven't came in and looking at our cash flow. So, uh, CFO Benita, um, how are we doing on cash flow or CEO pool? Are we okay? We will be once the taxes start to come in prior to the end of July. Okay. Yes. Okay, because it's like, like I read like on page two, um, where we see where the, the surplus is, a, it's a, currently it sits at a deficit. If I'm reading that right. CFO Ganita, do you have any comments on that? Yeah, it'll show a deficit until the property tax revenue gets recorded. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that means other revenues have not come up to our expenditures so far. Okay, thank you. CFO Ganita, do you have any, any final words on the financial statements? Well, the, the, as the statement of financial position shows, we have a good balance in the bank. So we're not going in the whole bank lines of the healthy balance in the bank. Okay, I see that now. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 13. Resolve the pursuance of sections 152 3 of the Munici Municipal Act Council Bill of the Committee and close the meeting to the public. We have protected services. Uh, we have a uh, discussion on Rise, Chamber, Valley of the Mountains, <coughs> tourism, uh, and also with the Arena Project Town Meeting. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Balbig. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. We're in camera. Let's resolve that this regular meeting of Council now be adjourned at 10.52 p.m. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor?